was a perfect example where youth is in my advantage. I was given five minutes to talk about my life story, which is more than enough. You know, three, four minutes, I think plenty. I don't know how team over there is going to get that done. But, yeah. Um, so, for me, the challenge is I, I really struggle to talk to young people. I think many of the people do so, too. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because for me, if you trace my very short professional career today, you can really see that my foundation really comes from my universities and Singapore. And um, I was just lucky to be there at the right time, at the right place, and meet the right people. So, but when young people come to me after I give a talk, they will say, oh man, how do you have the foresight to, to be in Singapore? Because before that, I was in Canada. Right, the right conventional was if you study high school in Canada, you probably will go to the States for university. Why would you go back to Asia? Right, so, but the truth of the matter, the, the real answer to that question is, when I finished high school in Canada, it was so cold that I just want to go back to Asia. Right, that, that was really the true answer. And if you want to go to Asia with English speaking university, your choices is only a top university, your choice is only either Hong Kong or Singapore. Many of my friends go to Hong Kong that time because it ranks higher. But the reason that I end up in Singapore is because they build a very, very nice tennis court that year. And I really like to play tennis. So it has nothing to do with me. So when they ask me, you know, why did you end up in Singapore? How do you have the foresight? I really don't know how to answer them. And if you look through my very short professional career to get to where I am, many of the key inflection points um, I really didn't have anything to do with it. I was really lucky. So for example, after I graduated from universities, just like every other student, I was struggling. Should I go into a big company? I study engineering, I'm into energy. Um, should I go into work for big companies in engineering or should I do my own startup? Right? At that time, I didn't have the answer. But the university has a program like here you see earlier, Hackathon. You know, I was fortunate enough to win Hackathon, and they gave me $1,000 to fly to the Silicon Valley um, to Stanford, right? Where there I met, you know, the co-founder of PayPal, I met uh, the co-founder of Yahoo, all these tech legends that I used to watch TV, you know, used to see them in the news. And when I'm there, when I physically meet them, um, the story there when they share with me is very, very simple and straightforward. All of them started no difference from where we started it. And that was the key inspiration for me um, to go back to Singapore and decide to start my company. And, and even for me to start a company then, it's much easier because that time, you know, the whole startup thing has started to boost. So I was really lucky to be there at the right time also. So a lot of the young people ask me, so with all these, you know, even if you start a company, um, I failed many times, you know. When you build prototypes, especially when you work in high-tech sectors, I mean energy, so I work with the oil and gas people, I work with the petrochemical people, right? These are conglomerates which have very high standards when, when you want to work with them. Um, I remember the first prototype I built, just to collect data, because I, you know, everyone wants talk, everyone's talking about data. So I, th I thought, you know, we build this prototype from um, the competition, we get some money to start a company. Now I have the opportunity to go to a big, companies, a public listed company, and say, just let me collect some data for free. Let me analyze the data and see what I can do for you. Right? A simple test, nothing can go wrong. So when we go install our sensors to collect the data, guess what? Um, if you're an electrical engineer, you should know that you should never short power with ground. Right? I didn't, I'm, some, I, I'm, I'm not really a good student at that time, so I, I, I forgot about that. Right? So, on a multi-million dollar semiconductor manu manufacturing machines, I shoot the things together and boom, you know, blow up. And when things like that happen, um, I was very, very fortunate to have great mentors with me from the universities because these are the things that you will not know how to deal with, right? There's nothing you can deal with. Y you get blasted as a kid, right? You get blasted by these middle management, higher management, saying, what are you doing, da 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 right? The only way that when I get back to the university by the mentor, there's like, the only thing you can do is apologize, right? Apologize and figure out what you can do and just keep, you know, working with them to see how can you solve the problems, right? That's where I learned how to deal with that. And without the mentor there, I, I wouldn't know how to do. And, and, and to be fair, the, the next, after I blow that thing up, the next three months is really nightmare. Every day I get called over, you know, I have to meet this layer, that layer, that layer. But it's the mentor there in the university, in the ecosystem that helped me get through that. 
And for a lot of the people here, you know, especially here, all those people are, are available here. People have access to that. And finally, um, when we start to scale the company, right, one of the biggest challenges for us, for, for the young growing up, especially tech entrepreneur, is we always started thinking that technology can solve everything, right? Even for me, you know, I thought technology can solve everything. And, and which is why Wizards Forum is very important, right? You need multiple collaborations from different sides, of, different side of the equations, right? Technology alone definitely cannot solve everything. I'll give you one example. When I first started it, when we finally developed the algorithms, were very exciting. We roll out in the manufacturing plant, and we say, by the way, the moment you analyze the data, right, you can see how much energy you can save. You're not doing this right. You know, this is inefficiency and all that. But the moment you say that to a mid manager from a big companies, you're literally slapping him and say you're not doing your job correctly, right? So even though you have this great technology, if you don't know how to deal with the people, uh, you will never get rolled out. And if technology is not implemented correctly and used correctly, there's nothing you can do, right? So the, the all in all, the summary is, you know, how can we give exposure uh, to people and then really help them understand that technology is not everything. And more importantly, technology can be developed in uh, developed countries, but to really mature technology, I think that's where emerging countries really have a role to play. Because the cost that you want to roll out these kind of breakthrough technology in emerging countries is almost impossible. You must really go to the emerging countries to have exposures like this to understand their challenges and figure out how you can bring technology to a level where everyone can use. And that's when you can really, really achieve some of the things that mentioned in the Sustainable Development Goal. Thank you.